this is not a review show. You know, I keep saying that, and yet, here we go again. I want to talk to you guys about a video game that I found this week. It's an MMO, um, it's browser-based, it's free-to-play, and it takes place in a virtual Petri dish. This ought to get interesting. The history of this game is a little hard to sift, and considering that the game's only about a month and change old, that's kind of weird. Well, in infinite years, I'm really late to the party, but here's what I got. The game is called Augur IO, and it was created by Reddit user Zeech. It's going to be one of those shows, isn't it? It was done in late April 2015. Now, the game is pretty popular. It's already been greenlit on Steam under the username M28. The game is actually pretty simple. You play a cell. You move around by using the mouse to steer, and as you run into the multicolored pellet, your cell will gain mass and will get larger, with the trade-off being that your speed decreases. The game board also has several other players doing the same thing. If you overtake a player smaller than yourself, you absorb their mass and gain size. If it's the same size enemy, you pass through them. If they're bigger than you, well, you better hope you can run. The game board also features these things called viruses. Now, a small cell can go through them without a problem. Larger cells will actually explode into several smaller ones if they hit a virus. Players can also eject mass by hitting the W key, and they can launch half of their own mass in sort of an attack with the spacebar. Your cell eventually does repair itself, but it takes time depending on the size of your cell. And those are the basics. And there's two basic kind of games right now. There's a free-for-all and there's a team-based game. Free-for-all is pretty much what you'd think. Everyone's out for themselves in theory. Some play with the must-eat-all-smaller-players mentality, and some play with the I'll-just-quietly-avoid-conflict plan, and some people like feeders, and they'll shoot pellets at other people to make them get larger. The team game is actually kind of similar, but you can't eat your teammates. Instead of a leaderboard, there's this constantly rotating chart showing which team has more mass. This game's a lot more chaotic, because you've got people coming at you from two teams. You also see a lot more teamwork in this one. Gosh, I wonder why. Getting into a game is actually really easy, since it's browser-based. You just go to the site, choose a name, and go. In free-for-all, some names have skins attached to them, so you see a lot of reddits, and earths, sirs, and, um... Well, the game is a product of 4chan, so what'd you expect? Rainbows and unicorns? The object of the game? Well, actually, I kind of think that's the real beauty of this game, because you make it up for yourself. This might be me overanalyzing it, but the lack of a win condition actually makes this game a heck of a lot more fun. On the free-for-all mode, there's a leaderboard that shows who the most massive players are, but there's no incentive to actually get on the leaderboard. There's no timer and there's no resets to make people want to gain mass faster, so as a result, you can play the game any way you want at any speed you want. Personally, I like to play to survive. It's a hostile environment, and it's fun to play the head games that are inherent to the game. And then I kind of get into this zen-like headspace that I can just play for hours. Actually, bring your own music, because the game really doesn't have any. If you're looking for recommendations, I would recommend Dead Mouse on Night Mode. But that's just me. Okay, back to my point. Well, since there's no set win conditions, you can't really predict what someone else is going to do. For example, a lot of people will make pacifist names and then play super aggressively, or I've had people follow me for a long, long time and then just randomly give up and go chase someone else. I like the challenge of predicting other people's motives and then try to figure out what their actions are going to be. There are a lot of universal strategies, though, like being aware of your surroundings. Opponents are less likely to attack you when there's lots of equal opponents around them. Or if you start moving in spirals, it makes it really hard for them to use a single-shot attack on you. I have found a bunch of strategies that work really well for me, and I could get into the details of that, like you know, mass bullying, or using the escape mechanisms, or using cover, or shooting at the uh, viruses, but I don't really want to get into that right now, because it would just kind of bog me down in that. I don't want to... The point that I'm getting at here is that everyone's going to find a tactic that makes them happy. You know, and if you lose, so what? There's no death penalty. You hit play again and you start up again. No problems. Actually, what I find more interesting about this game is what it's taught me about people. First of all, people are really vindictive. Enough so that they're going to cripple themselves to get revenge for something you did or if your username offends them so much. I've seen people do cell splits and get themselves eaten, but they got me first, so I guess it was worth it, right? More interesting to me about the usernames. Some people use them in the sort of a sort of conversation. The game doesn't have a chat feature, which is actually good in my opinion, so the names are the way that you sling insults or talk back to people. I actually think it's an internet rule. You have to be as offensive as possible so that other people can be even more offensive back at you. 
But on the other hand, with no way to chat, there still is communication. Remember that W key to shoot mass at other players? It's used to communicate. Someone will fling a ball at another player, and then the other player will fling the ball back. It's kind of like asking, hey, friend, and then getting a response of, yeah, friend, and then moving on. I don't keep up with the Reddit thread, so I don't know if this was agreed upon somehow or not, but it seems to be the accepted rule. I do want to make one more comment about this, and I might be soapboxing just a little bit when I say this. Augur was just recently greenlit on Steam, and that's cool, I'm all for it, I'll probably play the hell out of it on Steam, too. But honestly, something about Steam... Uh, I, I hope they don't try to do things like shoehorn in achievements, because if they do that, it's going to completely ruin the game. As I said before, since there's no stated win condition, everyone can find a way to play that they like. So, just my opinion. People keep coming back to this game because they play how they want to play, which gives the game depth. Achievements would severely limit that depth by telling people how to play. If there was an achievement for, I don't know, be number one on the leaderboard for five minutes, then people are going to play with that goal in mind and that goal alone. And that would actually ruin a lot of what Augur is good at. If anything, the best games out there are like that. They just, you know, having a structure having has its place. But the best modern games don't tell us what winning is. They just throw the tools out there and say, have fun. And isn't that why we game in the first place? All right, all right, I'll get off my soapbox now. Well, as of right now, the game is undergoing constant improvements and tweaking, so between the time of this recording and the time you see it, a lot may have been altered. But that's the fun part. Adjusting your strategy to how the world works? Well, that's just a sign of a good gamer. So if you can stand the colorful usernames, I actually recommend it. Jump into the game. It's a free-to-play title. It's run online. Browser-based, nothing to download. Just jump right in. And you might see me somewhere on there. But I don't play as Tiger. I play as this. Nobody gets it. And I'm okay with that. Okay, I don't like the sound of that.